Before we took this commercial break, we were talking to a very distinguished guest today, Dr. Shahid Al Alam, curator, photographer, and writer, and chief of uh, Drake and uh, Parchala South Asia Media, and a host of other. He's also a very actively in, involved in the human rights uh, work in Bangladesh and worldwide. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, when did this uh, idea come to you? mind that you have to establish a photographic institute in Bangladesh and uh, provide training to not only just our own people but uh, those in South Asia? Well, it started essentially, I mean, when we started Drik, the idea really was that we would create a platform mm -hmm. for indigenous practitioners. Um, as we went along, we realized if we wanted to fight a full war, we needed an army. Right. Uh, and that was what needed to be built, skilled only, professionals. Only ambush will not do. Well, exactly, <laughs> yeah. So um, we had started doing some training in Drik itself. At that time, I was the president of the Bangladesh Photographic Society. You were there for three terms. As a yes, president. and yes. while that was, we work collaboratively, Drik and the Photographic Society, we started running some workshops which were good, we ran well, but we found that they were not really very effective in the long term mm -hmm. because the energy, we got great trainers from all across the world. I arm twisted my friends into coming and teaching, which they did, they were very generous, but we felt every time we were starting from zero, mm -hmm. and we felt that really what we needed was a proper educational structure whereby there would be a curriculum, there would be continuity, and there would be a direction um, in the educational process. So on the 18th of December 1998, we took advantage of a seminar that was being organized by the World Press Photo Foundation. I was involved as a member of a jury with World Press and um, I argued with them that part of what needed to be done was really train photographers in mm -hmm. these countries. So there was a, the first set of seminars took place in Bosnia, Herzegovina, Zimbabwe, Peru, and Bangladesh. And I used that opportunity to launch the School of Photography, which since has become really uh, well known mm -hmm. internationally. I mean, it is in professional circles, it's recognized as probably the finest school of photography in the world. So, most of the media uh, in Bangladesh, particularly print media, do they? Uh, employ now your graduates? Yes, they do, which is rather nice for us. <laughs> I mean, the fact that in the major newspapers, um, the majority of the photographers happen to be Pachala alumni. Um, but not only that, it, it also has meant that these newspapers have changed. The, yeah. Their outlook, the way in which they use images, it's much more dynamic, it's, it's much more interesting. And they have also... It's much now, more positive. Not just positive, I think images are used in a far more creative way than they mm -hmm. used to be before, mm -hmm. uh, to the fact that they now employ picture editors, which they never used to do. Right. And in fact, the picture editors also happen to be <laughs> former Vachala students. Um, so that, that aspect certainly is working. But now we are training in other countries as well. We, we train, uh, we run international residency programs. So we have students from North America, Europe, Australia, Japan, China, mm -hmm. India, who come to Bangladesh because that's where the best... You said you train in other countries. Or the, or that we also do. Uh, in fact, I'm here now in Britain uh, running a You're workshop running a here. seminar or a yes. workshop? Uh, I mean, last month I was involved in uh, a seminar in Oxford. Uh, tomorrow, uh, well, you'll be broadcasting this on Thursday, won't you? Yep. Um, so um, on the 20, 21st, uh, I have a workshop um, at Rich Mix. Uh, but this is part of an ongoing program that we'll be doing with Rich Mix where we will be engaging with the youth in Britain, helping them. Is it across the board, uh, the, the members? Or, or yes, just? yes it is. Um, but we will be teaching them storytelling skills, helping right. them talk about their own experiences, mm -hmm. helping them tell their own stories, much in much the way we've been doing it in Bangladesh. But we've since run international workshops, uh, not since, we've, we've been running international workshops in Egypt, mm -hmm. in Myanmar. Next year, we're going to be doing it in China. So we run major international workshops in other countries where students from 
different parts of the globe come over and our teachers go over and teach. When you talk about uh, storytelling, I mean, they, do these, they come with a theme, a particular uh, end? In these workshops, generally what happens is um, the students will submit. They mm -hmm. will first do some research. Mm -hmm. They will submit their story ideas. We will look at them, mm -hmm. do a reality check on them, give them feedback. Mm -hmm. Once they arrive, then you know, they might further fine tune it because it's one thing to make a decision from far away, another when right. you actually arrive on the land. Uh, but essentially our interest has always been related to issues of social justice, mm -hmm. uh, equality. Uh, but we don't make it very rigid. I think, you know, it's important for the artist, the photographer to express his or her own it point of view. To feel free to... Well, exactly. That creativity is something we have to allow for. Right. Uh, and they will take on whatever story they find interesting, important to tell, tell to the world at large. And to a large extent, I think it is about telling untold stories. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, there's somewhere I read about, see, this, uh, your majority world's work is about uh, telling the world unheard stories, see, and you just said untold stories. That, that's a bit different to me. <laughs> well, um, the term majority world itself is something I need to yeah. tell you about, yes, uh, because yes. for a long time, I mean, I told you about that story in Belfast before, and I think it also comes from the lexicon, from the words that I use define who we are. So we've always been defined as those who have not. Yeah, the developing the third, third world. Third world, exactly. Third world, least developed countries, Under developing developed. world, exactly. So they're the first and we are the third. Why should we accept these definitions? Right. I think it's time to question it. And one of the things which is worth remembering is when the leaders of the G8 countries make decisions for us, it's time for us to remind them they, that they happen to be minority. representatives of 13% of the world's population. We are the majority. Right. And if democracy, which they wax lyrical about constantly, is something they believe in, yeah. it is about time our voice was heard and our point of view was taken into... But can uh, beggars be choosers? I don't think we're beggars. I think it's the other way around. I, I mean, if you well, look... Why, why do we get aid then? We get aid because it's convenient for aid givers to give us aid. I don't think we need is it, aid. Is it convenient for us to receive aid? No, I, I, and I wish we had um, people with spine in our, uh, in our administration, in our governance, mm -hmm. who, had, um, who had the audacity and the courage to say we don't need it. I don't think we do. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do need is better trade terms, which we do not get. Mm -hmm. What we do need is Maybe better an equity. training. Certainly, we need to develop our skills, and, uh, and partnership is something I have always believed in. But yes. I, I think it's, it's, um, it's a two-way street. And if you really analyze aid, uh, and if you look at it, for every dollar that comes in, I think more dollars flow out. Uh, so it's a myth. Well, who, who, who f <laughs> takes them away? For a start, you look at how aid money is distributed. A lot of it goes into projects uh, which are wasteful. A lot of it employs expensive foreign consultants, right. most of whom we do not need, and the money flows back out again. Right. Most of them require us On to do things. On the housing and the cars and... Uh, all of that sort of thing. And if you actually do a proper economic study, I think our nation's... Pro profit far less from that right. uh, than it is made out. And at the end of the day, how it's a percentage of a, uh, the countries that give money give a fraction of a percentage of their GDP, mm -hmm. and the money that we receive is a fraction of the, the GDP of our own foreign income. Our heroes are the garment workers, the migrant workers, the, farm, uh, the farmers, the entrepreneurs. They're the ones who really earn true, for our country, true, yet true. they're not valued. Uh, with a relatively small amount of foreign aid that is given, foreign countries have, uh, have huge clout yep. over our countries. No way would uh, a foreign nation be allowed to interfere in a nation's sovereignty in the way in which it happens like, in our countries. Like, like some ambassadors are more visible than uh, our own ministers. Absolutely, and are far more powerful <laughs> in that sense. Uh, but, I mean... I think if you're being honest, 
There's no such thing as morality in international politics. They do it because they get away with it. Right. And they get away with it because our politicians, our leaders allow them to get away with it. Uh, if, we, if our politicians were not as spineless as they are, I think things would be very different. Do you think that in future we will stop uh, seeking aid and then we'll be able to run our administration in a much, uh, on a be better uh, system and a uh, better esteem line? I think we need to be better run, without a doubt, better managed, more efficient systems. I think despite our politicians, despite all the things that go wrong, countries like Bangladesh, what, 6% GDP on a right. regular basis? Right. How many countries can boast that? And that country has been doing so well, not because of our governance system, mm -hmm. but despite it. Right. Um, certainly, there are things that need to be uh, curbed and stopped. There's huge corruption, though that corruption also involves international players, sadly. Um, it's also waste, isn't it? There's waste, there's corruption, there's inequality. There are lots of things wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to brush it under the carpet by any means. There's a huge amount that is right as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I think if we look at it from, from a historical perspective, the wealth of the world was in India and China. True. That is why the colonizers came to our countries. They have sucked the wealth, made their own nations wealthy, and now we have to suffer the consequences. But, you know, I'm not just harping back. I think yeah. the onus is upon us to ensure that we stand up uh, for ourselves and do what is right. And certainly we ourselves have a lot to blame. I'm not taking that away. But I think, to a large extent, a better run country uh, with equitable terms and with the rest of the world as partners would, make, would uh, be better A better run country, but who is going to run? Or do we have uh, good technocrats? Could we have better technocrats, better educated people? We have some people, not you enough. Are, you are uh, let's say a professor too, so I'm asking you, how is the education system coping? That is a weakness. It's a good point that you make. Certainly, we have um, an education system that is wanting at many levels. Uh, it can and will be improved. I think, having said that, there are gains that have been made. Significant gains have been made at, in primary education. I think um, in terms of uh, other indices for development, Bangladesh has done well. Certainly better than India or Pakistan or many of our neighbors, that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. I think a far more, far more certainly is needed. But I'll come back to what you were talking about. I mean, you look at um, the finest people in our country, the finest brains, the finest um, intellects, most of them are sucked away by foreign countries who have that's invested it. nothing that's in it. their development. A poor country like Bangladesh creates doctors, engineers, creative people in all those fields. We invest in people who then go elsewhere to serve other countries who have invested nothing on those people. Well, how to suck them back? I think what is beginning to happen is uh, um, that people are beginning to realize that Bangladesh is a land of opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, the real energy is out there, not here. I mean, Europe is a decaying space. Uh, the th growth sector is in countries like Asia, uh, uh, countries in Asia, and really that's where the energy is. I think that is also something which the new youth are beginning to recognize, and that shift is beginning to take place. Um, while that happens, we need people who are able to negotiate that's the it. best terms for us. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll digress slightly, but uh, let me give you the example. I mean. Uh, we had the military takeover. I mean, this supposed uh, caretaker government that came right. in last, yeah. effectively it was a military government. It was a military government that was put in place by the European Union, by the United States. And while these countries talk about democracy and freedom, they're far happier with a pliant dictator than they are with a messy democracy. Yep, we want our it's, message. It's easy to handle one person rather than yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole and bunch of. It was during that relatively short period of time that so many deals were made which were damaging to my country, where all these multinationals got their perks, got their special deals, got huge benefits which have bled my country. Uh, and I think the politicians, despite uh, the critique I have of them, 
have actually served our country better than these autocrats oh, have. Great. Uh, on this very happy note, uh, we take another break. And when we come back, we'll uh, discuss further the situation of Bangladesh and uh, the contribution of uh, so many organizations that uh, Dr. Shahidir Alam has established. Okay, viewers, don't go away. We'll be back soon.